How are you doing? Today is a very special day because I get to design one of my absolute favorite vehicles of all time because I personally owned one before. I owned a 2011 one to be exact and we are talking about the Ford Mustang GT. Now there's a lot of Mustangs, there's a lot of uh, different trims in that line. You got the, the base EcoBoost, the GT, the uh, GT500, GT500, GT350, and uh, the Bullet. Yeah, and who knows, there may be some more that I don't even know about, but yeah, the Mustang has a nice line of vehicles for everybody. And we are designing the Ford Mustang GT today, specifically the one that I would buy if I were to buy a Ford Mustang GT today. So let's go ahead and go to vehicles and let's go to performance. And we, ha no, it's not under performance. Why is not under uh, SUVs, trucks, vans, electric, commercial vehicles, future, no cars why would it be on the cars for that's weird instead of performance vehicles that's weird maybe because I, I guess they're well i guess well so under cars starting at twenty six thousand six seventy, that's the base mustang are they saying the are they saying that the base mustang is not a performance vehicle the eco boost i guess that's what they're saying because it's not under performance vehicles so that's kind of weird but i would think it is 310 horsepower I've never driven an EcoBoost Mustang, by the way, but um, I hear good things about them. So anyway, the Mustang GT, here it is. Fantastic looking vehicle. I like it a lot. I currently like this generation. Um, I think it's, I, a lot of you may disagree, but I think it's one of the best looking Mustangs ever designed. Um, this front end right here, this one has the new front end, the new uh, facelift. The old one might, may have been a little bit better, maybe, but I still like this one a lot, um, so no complaints here. But let's go ahead and go to build and price. So the Mustang starts at $26,000, not the GT model. So let's not get it confused. The GT model is gonna start at a lot more money than that. Uh, I need to enter his zip code to get started. So 60429, I'm just making up one. That's not my zip code. All right, build your own. And yeah, the EcoBoost Fastback starts at 26,670. But we're gonna go on down. We're gonna skip past the GT because that's not the one I would get. I would go straight to the GT Premium, which starts at $39,880. Now, the GT itself starts at $35,880. But with the uh, GT Premium, you get leather trim, leather trim seats, heated and cooled seats, heated mirrors with integrated turn signals, selectable drive modes with toggle switches, plus a nine speaker audio system. So to me, the extra, what is it, $4,000, it's definitely worth it to me to have all those features. Unless you're buying this car, taking it straight to the track and you're gonna just kinda, you know, tune it and do whatever to it anyway, then if you're, if you're buying it for an everyday used car or a weekend car, definitely go with the premium model. You cannot go wrong with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and go with the GT Premium. All right, now for the color. So this particular generation Mustang has a lot of good colors. Mustangs have always kind of had pretty much good colors. Um, but this one, they have the grabber, the grabber line, the velocity blue, and Kona blue, twisted orange. Red is all, always a hot color. Black's always a hot color. But for this particular one, again, if, I, if I'm buying one, I'm gonna go with the Kona blue. I think that's the best looking color. It's not too out there crazy. At the same time, it does stand out. And it looks a little bit different from uh, what we're seeing right here on the internet. They're not actually portraying it accurate enough in my opinion. I've seen a lot of the Kona blues in person. And this looks a little bit off to me. The actual Kona blue looks a little, little bit darker to me in my opinion. Um, and that is the perfect color for this car. And unfortunately, I've, I've already looked into it. I would prefer to have white or like silver stripes on this car but it does not allow you to do that it allows you to put a white racing stripe but it's not the right kind it's this awkward looking racing stripe you see it's like there there it is right there it's like white it's like you know it's not this two stripes aren't even width wise so we're gonna just miss the stripes completely on this on this particular uh model let's go with less no stripes now, as for the powertrain, a lot of you are gonna probably get mad at me for this. Most of you aren't actually. I know people always say, you gotta go with the manual, you gotta go with the manual. But the reality is, most people buy these cars with automatics and these automatic transmissions are amazing, especially nowadays. They're a lot faster than the manuals. Um, I get it, they're not as engaging, but you do have paddle shifters. But me personally, I don't race cars. Um, 
I just like to put it in drive and go and occasionally use the pedal shifters. Um, I like I have I currently have an SS Camaro. The pedal shifters they're they're not they're nice. They're not as responsive as they should be. But if I ever do want to go into manual mode, to me that's good enough for me. Uh, but yeah, overall I definitely I'm more of a cruise put it in drive and cruise type guy. I do not want to do all that shifting. Uh, where I live at, the traffic is pretty heavy, and I don't get it's not probably. 20% of the time, it's just open roads. It's just not common out here where I'm at uh, in the Chicago area. So yeah, we're gonna go with the 10-speed select shift automatic transmission that adds $1,595. Um, one thing I do like about these uh, manual transmissions was that, is that they have the rev matching feature. So it's kind of hard to mess up your shifts if you if you if you're learning or you just don't know what you're doing or you just you just suck at it. The rev matching features uh, gets the RPMs right where they need to go for you to go into the for you to you know for whatever gear you're going into. So that's pretty cool with these newer uh, some of these newer manuals. All right, packages. So it, we already have the 400A package. And we're gonna scroll one down to the 401A equipment group. This is a must have, I have seen it in person. Uh, it's a 12 inch LCD digital instrument cluster with my color. That looks freaking amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. You also get pr premium trim with color accent group. I don't know, I'm sorry, premium, premier trim. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. But anyway, heated steering wheel, that's cool. Voice activated touchscreen navigation system. Uh, let's go ahead and add that two thousand two hundred dollars this in my opinion it makes the car uh it makes the car feel pretty upscale and just right on par with today's car this is a 2020 by the way so a lot of cars now are having these digital instrument customers clusters and this just looks really cool uh the graphics and stuff like that so we're gonna go ahead and add that and let me have let me see if we can show you that on the interior right now let's go to interior let's get rid of that Yeah, there it is right there. That look, unfortunately, it, it won't show you an, an actual animation, but it is showing you how it looks opposed to if we take it away. Can you take it away right here? Let's see, can we? Yeah, there it is. You see when you take it away, you got the standard gauges with the uh, digital cluster in the middle, but when you go at the 401A, it takes over the entire thing. That looks fantastic, wow. All right, let's scroll one down. I would love to get the black accent pack package, but what we're going for, it, the two don't mix, unfortunately, so we cannot do that. So let's go ahead and go back to exterior. And this is the California package, adds $2,000. Looks nice in my opinion, I don't have a problem with it. However, the wheels, I'm not a fan of, so unfortunately we can't go with it. And it puts the car in black. You know, you can only get it in black like that, which is weird. So we will not be getting that. Oh, there's my phone. Sorry about that. So we are adding the GT Performance Package. I'm gonna call this the GT Performance Package Level One. I don't know if it's actually called the Level One, but right below it, there's the Level Two. Um, that one's a little bit different. You only can get the Level Two in a manual. So we're gonna go ahead. Uh oh, and it's keeping my car black. I gotta go back to uh, colors. Where's all oh, paint? There we go. Blue. There we go. Packages. Let's go scroll back down. Okay. So yeah. So I'm a huge fan of this GT Performance package. Um, for, wait here. Let me take it off really quick. All right. Go ahead and add it back. So you get the uh, where where'd it go? Oh, you get this large spoiler right here. Let me go ahead and click on the info so I can kind of read down a little bit. Um, you get 19 inch ebony black. Painted aluminum wheels, uh, Brembo six-piston front brake calipers with large, with blah blah blah, Brembo six-piston front brake calipers with large rotors, uh, engine spun aluminum instrument panel. Hmm, we gotta go back and take a look at that. The gauge pack, the oil and pressure, oil pressure and vacuum pack, uh, heavy-duty front springs, K brakes, large radiator, a lot of performance stuff. Um, uh, to me, it just looks cool. So we're gonna go ahead and add add that we have it on there now and this looks fantastic right here i like the fact that it already has tinted windows too what else do we have in here we have upsized rear sway bar unique epas abs and stability control tuning unique chassis tuning uh 
torsion differential with 3.55 axle ratio in the automatic. Uh, I guess that's what the man, okay. Strut tower brace, spoiler delete, convert, well, no, spoiler delete if we had a convertible, which we don't, so it gives us a big spoiler. Uh, performance rear wing, wait a minute. Is it? Did it delete the small spoiler? Yeah, it, of course it deleted the small spoiler and gave us the big rear wing or wang. That was, that was something. I got, no, I think someone told me once it's a wang if your head can fit in between it, which in this case you can't. So, yeah, that's the GT Performance Package 1s. It adds 5195 dollars and I think it's worth it. Uh, that puts our price up to $50,065 so far. Uh, that's pretty hefty right there, but uh, we had this is a beast of a car right here. Uh, the performance is definitely worth it. Now, let's see if we can go with the uh, Carbon Sport Interior Package. I don't know if we can. Probably not because we got that for GT Performance Package. Let's see. And yep, we cannot do it. Nope. Looks cool, though, but we can't do it. What, is it. Was it real carbon fiber anyway? Let's see. Carbon Sport Interior Package includes Alcantara door inserts, Alcantara seat inserts, carbon fiber instrument panel. panel. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I've never seen one in person like that, so I wouldn't know. Uh, Ford Safe and Smart Package for one an additional $1,000. What you get with that is the uh, you get uh, driver assist technologies includes pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking, auto high beam headlights, lane keep alert, adaptive cruise control, and rain sensing wipers. I'm going to add that because uh, my wife, if she drives the car, she's not the best at driving cars, so um, these little safety features, they, they just help in my opinion for extra $1,000, uh, why not? Why not? Okay, so here's our interior so far. Let's just have a good look around. It's a good interior. Uh, people have always kind of complained about Mustang interiors, but I find the people that complain about these interiors are people that have never actually owned the cars. Like I said, I had a 2011 Mustang and Everyone that got in my car was like, wow. Now, I, I get it, right? It's not on par with Cadillac or Mercedes or nothing like that. But the thing about the Mustang interiors is that it looks very unique. And that's what kind of stood out to people. And in my particular old car, I had like a huge aluminum uh, dash piece on the passenger side. Um, the gauges look really cool with the round chrome trim and everything. So everyone that got inside my car was like, wow, this looks really cool because it looked like nothing else. I get it. Some of the materials were plastic and stuff like that. But... I loved it. Never complained about it. I thought it looked cool. I was really impressed with the uh, gauges and the mic color and all that. And that current that carries over to this current 2020 car. It's kind of a similar style, but it's done better. They've added more premium materials uh, from what I can see in the picture right here. And I guess I've actually been in one. And it's it's a nice car. It's a nice car. You're not you know you buy a Mustang for the exterior and the uh, the performance. With that being said, the interior, is, I mean, I like it. I actually like it a lot now. So, uh, now, I've always liked it. Well, I, guess I shouldn't say I always like. I've always liked it. Uh, I started liking the Mustang interiors probably in t when they came out with the 2005 models. Um, that's when they kind of went a different, started going a different direction with it. That, that wasn't a very good interior, the 2005 Mustangs, but it, it was better than the previous versions. I don't know, what, I'm not sure what you call them. Uh, I, I forgot. Forgot what those Mustangs are called, but like basically 2004, and I think it was like from 2000 to 2004, they made those particular ones. Those weren't that good at all. I didn't like those at all. All right. Oh, and by the way, I should tell you this. What really got me uh, into Mustangs was watching that movie I Am Legend with Will Smith uh, when he hit that Shelby GT500. I was like, I really want one of those cars. Once I saw that, once I saw that film, and. Uh, kind of been hooked on them since even though i don't own one i own a camaro i know but like i i have no alliance to any car uh brand i like all cars um if i can get a good price on it i will buy it um so i you know i'm a fan of all cars but i think mustangs and camaros in general have like a little special place in my heart because from america i grew up around those cars and I'll, I've, I've always saw a lot of them and if you had one of those cars when i was a kid i thought you were pretty cool so uh the fact that the names are still around uh just means something it has you know, a little bit of emotional attachment but anyway i digress i'm off topic let's let's keep it moving we're not going to change the wheels we're going to keep the ones that we have on here for now i would love to put these 20 inch premium painted aluminum wheels but it won't allow me to do it i'm positive that we can try it but yep yeah, it's going to remove the performance package so we can't do it i've seen those wheels are actually kind of rare the uh, 20 inch premium aluminum 
painted wheels but i've seen a mustang with those exact ones in person and they actually look fantastic black is like the what's what's the current trend and everybody loves black right now but uh those look fantastic I, I, I would i would personally choose those if i could all right active valve performance exhaust absolutely 895 dollars i'm kind of a stock guy i don't do much aftermarket stuff to my car so we're gonna we want this performance exhaust uh right now you probably some of you are probably you know will probably go aftermarket with an exhaust to get something that sounds more aggressive i can't say i blame you as a mustang but um with this performance ex exhaust in my opinion it's good enough just like this it's good enough it's not gonna blow it's not gonna blow your your mind or anything but you gotta at least have this if you're gonna buy if you're gonna keep it stock uh if not then go aftermarket because you want to you want to hear your mustang you don't I'm, I'm not a crazy loud exhaust person uh but I, i'm not a stock you know the stock gt gt mustang exhaust is just not good enough in my opinion you always have to pretty much have to hammer it to, to hear it so this performance exhaust helps out a little bit 895 dollars why not but if you're gonna go aftermarket don't even add it but i'm gonna add it because i'm not gonna go aftermarket i'm gonna keep it like it is all right let's keep that scroll one down engine block heater no magna ride damping system i'm gonna say no only because i currently have uh magnetic ride control on my camaro i think this is like the same thing i'm pretty sure it is and i don't know what it's like in the mustang um but the mustangs now have independent rear suspension so i'm gonna say no i'm gonna pass on that one um you could go with that if you want but i'm not because i don't really it's in my Camaro now, like I said, and, and it's a, the ride is okay. I mean, I, you know, when I switch from sport to tour to uh, track, you know, I don't really notice that big of a difference. So maybe it's completely different with this car, but I'm not going to add it. I'm not going to add it. But maybe, you know, go test drive the car, see if it has it. Test drive one with it, test drive one without it, then make that decision. Mini spare wheel tire, $405. Um, no, nope, we can use the weight savings. Uh, rear spoiler delete, nope. Rear spoiler pedestal, nope. Rear performance wing, we already have that. Uh, let's keep on scrolling down. Wheel locking kit, sure, why not? Uh, it doesn't really do anything. If somebody wants to get your rims off, they can get these things off, but it delays them by a second, so let's go ahead and add it. $395, sure, why not? It's probably a lot cheaper <laughs> to just go in Pet Boys and, and uh, buy some wheel locks, but I would forget. I would never do it. Uh, I would tell myself I'm gonna do it one day, and every time I go to Pet Boys, I wouldn't. I would not do it. Uh, rear axle ratio. We're gonna keep what we got. 3.555 limited slip rear axle, and uh, and I think that is. Oh no, interior. Oh, so we are gonna add the midnight blue grabber, the midnight blue grabber blue stitch to this car in the interior, and that gives us like a blue stitching outline, as you can see right here. That looks really cool, makes the interior pop a little more. I wish we could change the uh, the um, actual leather inside, like to a different color. I may go with this tan, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna, yep, not let us do it. Cause that's just, I don't know why it does that. Uh, as you can see, it looks cool in the pictures right there. Look at that, check that out. If you can kind of see it through, it, it did it for us, but it tells us it's, it tells us if we do it's gonna take away our 401a equipment group and some other stuff so unfortunately we cannot do it so we got to go with the midnight blue grabber blue stitch and that that's good enough for me this looks pretty cool so we'll just add that and what else i'm surprised forward doesn't have that 360 where you can like do a 360 and spin around the interior and everything you can't do it um leather send nope 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 oh they do offer recaro um seats if i'm not mistaken where is that at i saw those before it's like recaro seats oh there they are recaro leather trim front seats problem is uh i believe it takes away the heated and cooled feature and it also takes away the uh uh automatic controls it'll be like a manual seat and again i'm not racing this car me i buy my cars are driving around the street may hit the gas every now and then so i want to be as comfortable as possible and i want all the luxury features so uh, yeah, no Recaro seats here, but if you're tracking it, go right ahead, add your Recaro seats. Uh, link graphite aluminum instrument panel finish. Hmm, let's see if we can add that. We cannot. It takes away stuff. Whatever, we don't need it anyway. No, no big deal. 
and let's keep on going down the line i think we pretty much oh premium uh floor liners front and rear um no those are like rubber floor mats for like you know rough conditions maybe winter and stuff like that and mud i don't think my car is going to be in, in that kind of this particular car wouldn't be in that position uh to even need those i don't think so uh, yeah i'm gonna say no 170 dollars we don't need them because our car is going to be a uh a weekend summer car only and that's really it so we're not going to be dealing with any you know harsh elements outside uh let's keep on going down and the, okay here's something uh the bno sound system 12 speaker sound system with a subwoofer let's see how, well so for, right now we're at fifty two thousand three hundred and fifty five dollars it doesn't show me a price oh there it is so wait a minute it took away something oh it's nine hundred ninety five dollars that's well worth it i'm not an aftermarket stereo guy so i'm gonna go ahead and add this to it right here because i don't like doing aftermarket stuff um the system that we already had was a premium sound system but this just takes it up a notch right here so let's go ahead and add it for 995 dollars that brings us up to fifty three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars and does it tell us how many watts this is or anything no it doesn't sorry about the uh text messages guys but uh that's that's what just what's happening right now and i think that pretty much wraps it up i sell accessories uh, hood protector by lund nope that's like a shaded color front uh spare by air design nope nope let's keep on going let me close this out so we can see go back to the exterior i don't know about these things though hood louvers never saw those in person so let's see how they look why is one hood louvers oh one's matte one's gloss we would go with gloss no probably matte i think yeah i think matte because there's not a lot of gloss on the car for 199 dollars i don't know if this does anything to the car You can't why you, you can't see a top view so i don't know about this i'm gonna pass i'm gonna pass it's just an aesthetic thing and i can't see the top of the car unfortunately it doesn't show you a good angle so we're gonna go ahead and pass on those uh these parking lap curtains by air design gloss yeah, let's just add both these the uh parking lap curtains and the uh hood louvers and let's just see how they both look and matte and see if you know Maybe if we add them together, maybe we can tell if we want them or not. But so far, I don't want them. Mm, no, no, not from the picture. This doesn't it looks it looks it looks it looks very aftermarket, like Pet Boys aftermarket. From the picture, maybe in person it looks a lot better. I can't really tell though. But from the picture, no, it looks like I just kind of had fun at Pet Boys and started buying stuff. Okay, uh, let's keep on going. Uh, front trunk trunk liner cargo net a dash cam hmm now a dash cam is interesting if they actually hardwire this dash cam in then that that will be worth it in my opinion if they actually are 720 1080p too hmm i'm gonna go ahead and say yes it's 349 dollars that's installed and if it's hardwired in it can save me the trouble of you know having to plug it in to the cigarette outlet thing and all that yeah go ahead and add that it's a pretty cool option right there because uh a good dash cam is going to cost you about 100 120 bucks anyway you're right you can get one you can get them a lot cheaper than that but i would say 100 bucks gets you an average an average uh uh dash cam and they're all pretty good in my opinion now anyway but this one's already installed and it um at it and what else? I don't know. What, oh, the wires are hidden, so you don't. You're not gonna have to have those. And you could, yeah, you could do it in high wires yourself, but why not? Three hundred forty-nine dollars. We have the money. Wait a minute. There's another one down there. What is going on? There's two of them. Oh, rear-facing camera. You have a rear-facing camera one too. Hmm. I don't know if I want a rear-facing camera too. Hmm. Wait a minute. But this one has two cameras right here too rear facing camera yeah i don't now, now i'm not sure i think maybe this was a rear and front facing camera yeah i don't know 
I'm gonna go with the one because they yeah that one that's a front facing camera and that's a rear facing camera so for 329 you I think you're the front and rear facing camera includes forward and rear and rear facing camera and what does this one include all right I'm gonna go with the one that says include forward and rear facing camera for 329 it's actually twenty dollars cheaper so install hardware in hard hardware in hardwired in was i saying hardware the whole time probably and that is it guys uh no we don't want the tvs in the back in our back of our bus no one's riding in the back seat uh windshield screen <laughs> they're just trying to sell you a windshield uh windshield sunscreen for 80 bucks that says escape on it should say mustang it's probably gonna say mustang but um no no we're fine there too we don't need that either but we'll we'll go to the store and buy it no you know what if it's an exact fit right if it's the Excuse me, whoa, I was eating peanuts, sorry about that. If it's the exact fit, meaning I don't have to, you know, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get that, actually, for 80 bucks, because if you go in the store, it's like 30 bucks, but it may be the wrong size. This is, uh, looks like it's gonna be the right size, and it's probably gonna say, it's probably gonna say Mustang on it. So, here it is, guys, this is the perfect Ford Mustang GT, $53,758. Um, can't design one better than that you can't this is the perfect one right here auto trans you got the performance package one uh premium the premium interior the 12 inch lcd gauge cluster you got that big old wing on the back of it look this is fantastic and they already tinted the windows for tinted the windows windows for you uh which i'm sure they wouldn't actually they probably wouldn't do that but well, actually you probably can't get the windows tinted uh from the dealership they can have someone come in there and do it i'm, I'm sure certain dealers do that actually this car looks fantastic. If I was to buy a 5.0 Mustang GT, this is the one that I would get right here. You can't really design one better than this. I don't think you can. Maybe you would go with a different color. Let's just see since we're right here. Okay, we'll end it after the colors, but I'm pretty sure this is this blue is the one I would go with. So you can't go wrong with black. Black is always a, a uh, favorite color. In fact, my Mustang was black. Uh, black looks fantastic. The problem with black is uh, you see every little scratch and dirt on it and at nighttime it's not an high, a highly visible color so it doesn't really stand out um, when you're driving you know in a not a a not so much well lit area the black doesn't really stand out anyway grab a line remove okay I'm gonna say no to the grab a line because it's kind of it's trying to remove the stitching so let's try the Oxford white white's not bad either but uh, not on my Mustang. We're not doing white. No, I'm, I'm white. White looks good on trucks, in my opinion. Uh, this car looks good though. It does look good. It's a Mustang, so it's hard to make it. It's hard to make design it. It's hard to make it look bad, regardless. All these colors look pretty nice. Silver, that's a big no-no for me. Definitely don't want silver. Velocity blue. Let's see what that looks like. Why is this taking so long? Hmm. I kind of like it. Kind of. It's taking this long to turn sideways, really? I got to get that Jeopardy sound effect for when it does things like this. There we go. Yeah, that looks odd. I think... I don't think this is how the actual color projects and like I don't think this is how it looks in reality. I think this cut this this website's a little off. Uh magnetic. Cause I've seen that velocity blue in person and it looks fantastic. Red, race red, you can't go wrong with race red. That, look at that. That's that is sharp right there. You can't go wrong with a red uh car for a lot of cars actually. Except for like Tahoe's. I think Tahoe's look like fire, uh, like city fire, fire department cars. All right, let's go with this rapid red, see what this looks like. Oh, no, we can't go with rapid red because that removes the blue. And the twisted orange, let's see if we can go. No, we can't go with that either because that removes our blue stitching. So we can't go with that. That looks sharp though. I've seen the orange ones and I actually, I like the orange ones a lot. That would probably, that would probably be my second favorite color is the orange if I was to buy a Mustang. But we're gonna go ahead and go back to our Kona 
blue and that wraps this video up guys for mustang gt 5.0 gt premium fastback fifty three thousand seven hundred and fifty eight dollars uh this is a beautiful car um, i like it i'm a fan of the mustang it's killing right now when it comes to sales i think it's the number one selling pony car right now um i think the challenger second then the camaro Oh, poor Camaro. I don't know. The Camaro is actually a great car right now, too. It's the best Camaro ever made, uh, but it's just not. <laughs> I, Trans Transformer, the Transformers movies have like went down in quality, and the Camaro's popularity has went down with it. Not the quality of the Camaro, I don't think. Although it, some of them did have some transmission issues, but uh, yeah. For Mustang GT guys, this is the one to get. I will see you guys in our next video. Oh, whoever happens to see this video. What color would you pick? Would you do anything different? Uh, is there one that you would design? Do you have one? How would you spec yours out? I just started this channel, so not a lot of people are watching these videos right off the back. Um, so, you know, if you do see this, maybe just say, hey, well, I kind of like the car you designed, but I would go with this color instead. You know, I'd appreciate it. Uh, subscribe, comment below. Please like the video. Uh, please share if you want to or not. You know, it's up to you. Uh, take care. I will see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.